Oh, hello there. What are you here for? Are you here for Stitchmas? Then you're in luck because today is Stitchmas day one. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really, really cute Christmas stocking. It's fully lined, so you can get all sorts of little treats inside there. It's actually made from an old jumper. When I say old jumper, I mean my most favourite cashmere jumper that somebody shrunk in the wash. I'll name no names, but it wasn't me. It's fully lined. You've got this gorgeous little band here, which is actually Holly Taylor um, brushed cotton. Really soft and gorgeous. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing you need to do is head to my website. It's www.avidcrafts.com forward slash stitchmas, all one word, stitchmas. There you will find all the downloads that you need for stitchmas. So if there is a pattern that requires a PDF, if there's any cutting instructions, that's where you'll find them. Also check the description because there might be things in there as well that are useful. But for this particular project, you need to head to that website to get the free download. Now the download is just a picture of a stocking. Um, so you're welcome to do this freehand. You're welcome to use your own design. But if you want to use a template, that's where you'll get it. It's just a PDF. So click on it and save it to your computer. And uh, that's all you need to do. There's no checkout process or anything like that. So this is the stocking size. It's only a wee little stocking. But of course you could make it bigger if you want to. You could actually make it smaller. The sky's the limit. But for today, we're going to be using it exactly how it is on the website. So we've got the pattern piece. You only need one. You could cut out two if you want, but really you only need one as long as you remember to flip it over. But we'll go through that. You need a fabric for the main body of the stocking. Now I'm using this, it is cashmere. My one and only piece of cashmere. I've had for about five years, got a hole in it, but it was shrunk. I don't know if you can see, but it shrunk in the wash. So I'm going to um, upcycle it rather than have it in my wardrobe because I don't want to throw it away. Um, so I'm going to upcycle it into this stocking. So I've got a bit of cashmere. You could use an old Christmas jumper that doesn't fit you anymore, or perhaps it's got a couple of holes in it. You could use that, it'll be fab. Uh, you need a fabric for the lining. I've gone for this cream with the gold stars on, because I think that would go quite nice with the cashmere. Then you need a, a piece of fabric for the top of the stocking. And I've gone for this Holly Taylor brushed cotton that's just ridiculously gorgeous. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut out two stockings in your lining fabric, two stockings in your outer fabric. And if you're going to wad this, which I think we probably will do, two stockings in the wadding. Now by two, I don't mean placing the stocking straight down on your piece of fabric and moving it along you will need to flip the pattern piece over so that you've got a back and a front so you'll need to do that for the lining the outer you won't need to do that for the wadding because it's the same both sides unless you've got a fusible wadding you will need to then flip it over so let's get those cut out if you would like to use a seam allowance just draw on an extra bit on the outside maybe half an inch but for this case I'm not going to add on an additional seam allowance I'm going to draw exactly around the shape Right, so what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the stocking on my piece of uh, cashmere. What I've done is I've lined it up here. So this end of the boot is actually gonna have a different texture to the rest of the boot. And I think that would look really nice. So it's a good idea to have a look at what you're going to be using and see if there's an area that really works for you and pinning your piece down. Now I only need to cut this out once because it's double layer. I'm doing the front and back at the same time. So I'll cut it out quite close to the edge of the fabric whilst it's still quite large. And then I can cut it a lot better when I've got a smaller piece to deal with. That sort of breaks my heart cutting that jumper. I'm not going to lie to you. 
<laughs> oh dear me never mind never mind we're going to make a lovely sentimental piece now that we can bring out every year now we have our front and back so we've got front and back two lining pieces we now need to cut the two pieces in our foam fleece whatever i'm going to use a fusible foam i'm going to use this fusible fleece the only reason why i'm going to use this is that i think this will work better with the, my fabric choice um i think that if i just fuse it onto the back of the wool it will look a lot better and it will hold better for me because this is quite an open texture so actually i'm going to give it a bit of stability by fusing it together so minding those pieces out of the way and remember we because this is fusible it does have a right and a wrong side this is the glue side which is slightly bumpy we do need to cut one stocking one way and flip it and cut it the other way so you can draw on either side i'll draw on the the stipply glue side pop those to one side and now we're going to move on to the band around the top of our piece we want the band to sit on here what we want to do is be able to fold it over but we don't want to have it foam there's a couple of reasons why one it will make it too bulky and b it's just you you don't need to there's going to be uh, you can save that foam for something else so what you need to do is work out the size of your piece so the top of this is 13 centimeters or just over five inches okay so we want to cut a piece that's five inches in width and then we want to cut a piece that's two inches in width let's say two and a half inches just to be sure so just to go through that again so five and an eighth inch long and two and a half inches wide so over to our mat and i'll mark that off so five and a quarter is there five and a quarter is there And then we want two and a half is there two and a half is and now so that there is two in two and a half inches from that point of two and a half inches you need a further two and a half inches okay so all together you've got five inches now so essentially it's almost like it's two straps in one but it's the front and the back of the strap so five inches from this side, about five and a half in, five and a quarter inches, I should say. And then join those two lines together. Lovely. And you simply want to draw the line in the center as well that separates the two pieces. Right, so now we've got two pieces, front and back, for our, the top of the boot. Right, so you've got your two squares now for the top of the boot. We're going to go back and focus on our cashmere pieces here. So we're going to interface them now. So using that fusible fleece, line up that like so, and then you can put heat from the top or bottom. Just be careful that you don't scorch it if you've got something uh, a little bit uh, fragile like the cashmere. So now we've got the two front of our boot. We're going to take the top pieces we created we're going to lay those down right side down and we can quilt and clip the three layers together like so and like so oh that's not a that's not a clip that's a foot 
Right, we're going to stitch these now. So I'm going to use a half an inch seam allowance to join these together because I really want to make sure that they're not going to come apart, that, that uh, cashmere is not going to fray in any way. So half an inch across the top, we're going to join them together. So we've got the outer of our boot now. We can just flip that over like that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So that's front and back. Now we need to fold this strip in half and press just so that we've got a guideline. Right, we're going to stitch these together now. So right sides together. Line up all those curves, line up those top. We're going to stitch all the way around the outside of the boot. We do not want to stitch this part. We are just stitching around the boot itself. So get those quilting clips out again so that everything's joined together, all those layers. You will have to take this slow and steady on your machine because that's quite a few layers. Remember, we've got two layers of the jumper We've got two layers of the wadding, so just take your time. We don't need any broken needles. And again, I'm going to use half an inch seam allowance so that everything is joined together beautifully. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. Right, so that's what we're left with. Now, I would recommend just giving this a little snip so that you have got a really nice turning area. So just snip. And of course, you can trim this all back as well. You don't have to have all this bulk. You can trim it quite close to the stitches. That will also give you a nice, neat edge. You could use your pinking shears if you wanted to as well. I'm going to turn this through now so we can have a look at our stocking. It's already feeling so soft. It's just so luxurious. Right, and that's the that's our stocking so far. Looking really nice. Right, now we need to talk about the lining. So we've got our two lining pieces. We're going to stitch these together, right sides together. Now, with our lining, we want to leave a gap to turn it through. You want to leave a good four inch gap. So I'm going to leave from there to there. So that's on the straightest edge. It's not straight, but it's straighter than one of these edges. So I'm going to stitch down to this quilting clip, come off the machine, and then start stitching again from this quilting clip all the way around the outside. I used half an inch seam allowance on the outside, so I need to make sure I use half an inch seam allowance here, or the tops won't join together. So let's do that. Remember I told you to leave a good four inches? This is why. Taking this boot, you want to slip it inside your lining. So your lining is still round the wrong way, but your boot is round the right way. And just pull that end out of the top. We're now going to line up this top edge. So again, with your clips or your pins, starting with this seam, clip that together turn it round and clip this top one together. Right, so now you can sort of manipulate that. So you've got 
a complete join there. We're going to stitch that together. That could be quarter an inch, half an inch, whatever you want. But you're going to stitch around the whole of that top. And starting from that first clip, we can just pull it across. So pop in your needle to anchor your piece. And then you can simply stitch around. Now just make sure that you're not catching any of the other layers underneath. So line up your edges and stitch. Stop. Make sure it's all lined up. Make sure you haven't got any layers trapped underneath. Okay, so this is what we're left with, a very strange looking stocking. We're going to now turn this lining round through the right way. So now I've got a lovely join there between the stocking and the lining. You can put your hand inside the gap to get those edges out. Again, you can snip into this to, to make those corners nice and neat. Right, we need to sew this edge closed. So all we're going to pull, pull those two ends together and it will naturally come together. Now, if you just give that a little press, that will keep those layers together. And then you can just top stitch this or you can hand stitch it closed. I'm just going to top stitch it. I am using a blue thread at the moment because I like you to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, it's probably not the best <laughs> to use a blue thread you want to use a cream thread but i want to show you what i'm doing there we go as you can see that's the top stitched area there what we're going to do now is push this stocking through so we're going to push it into this stocking so just push my hand all the way into the back and push that boot out into there and that's sitting really nicely so then we can adjust the top. So put some pressure on the boot and just pull out the top here. Okay. Like so. Give that a press. That's gonna be a lovely crisp edge press front and back now we're going to flip this over if you're using something fluffy that's going to go larger than your piece but there we are there's our boot you could of course leave it like that you could have just half of it turned but i like the effect when the whole thing's turned you can see that beautiful lining there and there's our gorgeous christmas stocking absolutely super look at that lining in there really lovely really cute little christmas stocking you could fill that with chocolates candy canes and give that as a lovely gift to somebody and there we have our very festive little stocking. Really, really cute. I can't wait to fill this with little Christmas treats for the kids and maybe I'll give it to them one day when it's Elf on the Shelf time. Maybe Sebby could find this full of, maybe the Elf on the Shelf could even sit inside this. He'd really like that. He'd find that really funny. And I think he'd recognize the jumper as well. So I think he'd think that Elf would been up to no good. So that's quite a good idea. Maybe you could do that for your little ones or your grandchildren, that would be lovely. Right, we move on to Stitchmas Day 2 tomorrow. Thank you for joining me for the first one. It's been great to be back in this routine of filming videos for you. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed. Share it with your friends if you like. And I'll see you 
for tomorrow's Stitchmas Day 2. Bye!